to attard some of the trends in the global economy after the global financial crisis and how they impact uh, the very important objective of your country of achieving uh, the goal of becoming one of the top 30 uh, economies in the world, a goal that you can achieve if you're going to be implementing this program of uh, long-term economic transformation. I would start with these trends and identify very quickly 10 of them. After the global financial crisis, uh, the recovery in most uh, industrial advanced economies was anemic, subpar, below trend, because of a painful process of deleveraging after too much private and public debt. While the recovery in most emerging markets was strong, because these emerging markets have higher potential growth and did not have the same balance sheet problems as advanced economies. Second trend, there has been a rise in the share in global GDP and growth that is coming from emerging markets, because potential growth in emerging markets is 5-6%, while in advanced economies only 1-2%. And with this greater global power, economic, financial trading of emerging markets, they'll also have greater political and geopolitical power. Third, there is major am uh, amount of technological innovation in the global economy new energy technologies, new biotechnologies, new information technologies, new manufacturing technologies, and that's going to be a source of high productivity growth. For, however, a lot of this technological innovation is capital intensive, is skill biased, and is labor saving, and therefore both advanced economies and emerging markets will have to figure out how to create jobs and not just profit and productivity. Fifth trend, there are demographic trends. There is aging in most advanced economies and even in some emerging markets like China and Russia, but there is also population growth and a demographic dividend in most uh, other emerging markets. Uh, sixth trend, there is now greater uh, globalization and greater trade, not just in goods, but also in services, in capital, in labor, in information and technology. But we have to manage this globalization because there is already something of a backlash against trade and globalization. Seven, there has been some rise in income inequality because of many factors, technology that saves labor, trade and globalization, and so on. So it's important to have inclusive economic growth, otherwise there'll be a backlash against it. Eight, unfortunately, there is a lot of social political instability, and there have been also a rise in geopolitical risk. Look at the Middle East, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, what's happened right now in Hong Kong, some of the territorial disputes uh, in Asia. And nine, uh, there is a, a demand for natural resources and there is some scarcity, but there are also environmental risks given uh, the global climate change, and it's important to have sustainable development. And tenth, both advanced economies and emerging markets have to do structural reforms. Japan needs them, Europe needs them, US needs them, but also emerging market needs structural reform to maintain long-term economic growth, opportunity, and make sure that growth is sustainable and it's inclusive.